Good day. My name is Benjamin Herzberg. I'm the program lead for the private sector engagement for good governance program at the World Bank Group. And I want to talk to you today about fragility because we live in a very fragile world and we take economic development uh, for granted when it happens, but there can be a lot of setbacks. And I want to talk to you about a few of the setbacks. You remember the uh, earthquake in Haiti? Uh, Haiti was already on the path to redevelopment a little bit. It was taking off a lot of effort, a lot of international aid was going to Haiti when the uh, earthquake happened and it just toppled everything down. Not only uh, the, the horrible loss of life and, and properties and everything, but also it created huge uh, economic development havoc. Uh, the rise from the, the unemployment was already very high at 70%, it went even, even higher. Uh, and since then, uh, Haiti is still, many, many years later, still trying to catch up and come back to the pre-earthquake level. And so all that gain that had been done was, um, was lost. Closer to us, last year, um, the uh, typhoon in the Philippines happened. And that, again, it had a huge, not only, uh, of course, a lot of people who died and a lot of people missing and a lot of property destroyed, but if we look at the economic development, uh, they were about five to six billion dollar of loss and a huge setback in a number of sectors that the country was already starting to, to develop on the services side, for instance. Now, those kind of um, natural disasters, of course, create fragility and they're act of gods. We don't know, we can't prevent them, but they happen not only in Poor developed con in poor developing countries, they happen in rich developed countries. Remember the tsunami in Japan. And Japan had a very strong uh, automotive industry. And here's a picture from the tsunami in Japan where you can see that the car were washed away in a way. And during the, um, just after the tsunami, the, the car production fell 60% from what it was. And it took them a while to recover. No, they have recovered, but even in stronger economies are subject to this fragility and then they have to rebound. And the question is, how do they rebound? Um, other developed economy, the US. I'm sitting here today in Washington, DC, not too far from here in New Jersey. Uh, in 2010, there were the Hurricane Sandy. And Hurricane Sandy, when it landed, created an amazing amount of uh, destruction. There were about 650,000 homes that were destroyed or, or that were damaged by the hurricane. And the cost of it was 50 billion because sometimes if you want just to consider the cost, the, the more developed the economy, the, the cost becomes bigger because the, the economic loss become bigger. And it's very hard for New Jersey to kick back, but they are doing it. And uh, they were subject to that fragility that came, you know, from, from the wind. Now, of course, fragility comes also from man-made disasters. And there are many man-made disasters, and some of them are wars. Uh, here is a picture of uh, people uh, in Iraq with the Iraqi war. And the Iraqi war has been ongoing for a long time. It's, it's a fragile state, it's a conflict-afflicted state, and it's still ongoing today. And it's, it's very difficult, but it has created a very large exodus of uh, skilled uh, labor out of Iraq, people who went outside to find uh, jobs. A huge GDP drop uh, uh, during the war in, in, and, and just after in 2003, um, the, you, you have a very large uh, population which uh, is in the agricultural sector. All those people are very subject to the fragility that insecurity brings in. And that put the, the uh, economy in a very, very dear situation, especially for economies that try to diversify, like in Iraq, where they try to diversify from oil to non-oil sectors. For those non-oil sectors to develop, you need to have an ecosystem where there is a sense of security and there is some uh, forecasting that business people can do. But this constant fragility is very difficult to evolve in. 
you have other type of war like uh, the civil war in uh, in Syria that create not only problem for the country but all for the regions around it so for instance um, in if you consider uh, Aleppo you had a uh, lot of the you have a lot of the production facilities about 75% of them that have been destroyed and they were a huge uh, trading route for a lot of the fruits and vegetables who come from the regions. If you take the Jordanians, for instance, in the Jordan Valley that are uh, doing a lot of fruits and vegetables, they are a bit like the, the kind of the bread basket for the region on the fruits and vegetables, they had to completely change their trade routes because they used to go through Syria and they can't do that anymore. Because they can't do that anymore, they had not only to change their trade route, but they had to change their crop patterns to fit the different market that they were serving because of the different trade routes. So it had huge implications, and people need to adapt to that uh, man-made fragility, which is war, conflict, uh, civil wars, and so on. Sometimes you have um, instability, which happens for good reason, in a way. For instance, the Arab Spring, a liberation of people from a dictatorship uh, under which they were, uh, the, the political system under which they were. And uh, they want more freedom, they want more transparency, more accountability. And they get in the streets to demand that. And you have the Arab Spring with a number of regimes that are toppled, replaced by new regime. And those new regimes are not always the most stable. But at the beginning, you have actually a very good intent of trying to get more freedom. But that doesn't mean that doesn't create instability. It creates a lot of fragility and instability in the economic system. Here's a picture in Egypt on Plasta here, where someone was holding a sign and was saying, dear tourists, don't leave, we'll protect you. Because in Egypt, you had uh, about uh, 1.7 billion of economic loss just due to uh, the tourists not coming in Egypt anymore. And that's uh, very important for Egypt because tourism is one of a big industry in Egypt. And so even when you have those kind of you know, well-intended events, they do create instability and they do create fragility and that has a huge economic impact. Now, um, again, this is not the, um, this is not just the, uh, the lot of let's say, you know, the, the emerging markets. It's happened right in the OECD markets as well. And we remember the uh, economic crisis that, that hit in uh, 2007, 2008, and, uh, and all this with the uh, real estate uh, bubble uh, popping and everything that followed. This is an article from the Wall Street Journal in 2012 about uh, where today in January 2014, this is from January 2012, about two years ago, where you had a lot of the countries that started to be downgraded in terms of their uh, credit rating. And if you were to take the same pictures today, a lot of those pictures that you see here that have triple A's, today are not triple A's anymore. And so uh, those countries had had to face this fragility and had to react to it. And the reaction, if it doesn't come from the government, come from the street. Here's a picture of Greece during the huge uh, Greece crisis, uh, where you also have a few numbers of the GDP decline from the 2008 to uh, 2010, where you can see you had a huge GDP decline for all of those countries. Huge economic impacts, and therefore the need to come up with new policies the need to come up with new systems that can adapt to those new market conditions. And uh, this is why the uh, topic of public-private dialogue is very important. And this is why today I want to talk to you about promoting economic development and good governance through public-private dialogue. And what can we do about living in that world of fragility? How can we adapt faster how can we harness the energies which are in the market, which is a bit more reactive than the state usually, for them to cooperate with each other and find the right policies at the right time that will try to bring the market back on its feet?